क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटीन से इज अ फोर्स एक्टिंग ऑन अ बॉडी इनिशियली एट रेस्ट डिलीवर्स पावर टू इट सच दैट पावर इज प्रपोर्शनल टू टाइम देन द डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल बाय द बॉडी इज प्रपोर्शनल टू दी एन एथ पावर ऑफ टाइम फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ एन सो दिस क्वेश्चन इज एन एनालिटिकल क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स ट्राई टू सॉल्व दिस now as per the question given the power is directly proportional to time that means the power is some constant times t i hope this is very clear to you now we know that the power is actually the product of force and velocity so this is f into v so this fv and kt should be equal so which gives me force into velocity should be constant into t now this force actually can be written as m a v is equal to kt and we need to write down the function for velocity so that we can find out the function for displacement so what we can do over here is we can write down the acceleration as m v dv by dt this velocity is being kept over here the acceleration is dv by dt we know then it is k into t so this is the expression that we have now on reshuffling the expression a little bit this is going to give me v dv is equal to k by m t dt i hope this expression is very clear now to move further ahead if i want to integrate on both the sides i am going to get v square by 2 is equal to this k by m is constant this will come out and this t dt will give me an integration of t square by 2 this 2 and this 2 will cancel and we have a factor which says that velocity is equal to root k by m into t i hope this is very clear so ultimately what we have is we have that velocity is directly proportional to time now we can simply say that whenever the velocity is time dependent and the power is 1 so simply the displacement would be t square but if we want to do how we can do that we know that velocity is actually d by dt of displacement so that is equal to kt some constant k dash some new constant now if i want to integrate it further over ahead i am going to get this x to be directly proportional to t square and i hope the concept is very clear to you so that's how as per the given situation the power to which the displacement or the distance is depending displacement is depending to t square so the power is 2 so the correct option is option number 4 and we can put it in the box I hope the question is very clear and you have correctly done it. Now, so question number eighteen says a force f vector is equal to two i cap minus three j cap plus four k cap newton acting on a block of mass two kg displaces it with a displacement vector four i cap minus two alpha plus alpha k cap meter. If the work done by this force is zero, find out the value for alpha. So. that's a pretty simple question because the vector form of force is given vector form of displacement is given and we also know that the work done is actually work done is actually the dot product of force with displacement vector and we have both the vectors so just take a dot of both the vectors so work done is simply we know whenever we are doing the dot product we just multiply the i component with the i component so this is 4 into 2 that is 8 then minus 3 multiplied with minus 2 alpha will give me plus 6 alpha this plus 4 is being multiplied with alpha going to give me 4 alpha and this is given to be 0 so simply what we have is we have 8 plus 10 alpha to be 0 so that is 8 plus 10 alpha to be 0 and if i solve it further ahead i have alpha to be minus 8 divided by 10 that is minus 0.8 and i hope the concept is very clear to you so as per the given question which is the correct option option number 2 is the correct one so let me just highlight this i hope the question is clear 
क्वेश्चन नंबर 19 सेज टू बॉयज हैविंग मासेज इन द रेशियो थ्री टू टू रन ऑन अ लेवल रोड विद इक्वल लीनियर मोमेंटम सिंस दे हैव इक्वल लीनियर मोमेंटम बट दे हैव डिफरेंट मास दैट मीन्स दे डू हैव डिफरेंट वेलॉसिटीज एंड सिंस द मास इज इन द रेशियो थ्री टू टू द हैवियर वन विल हैव अ रेशियो थ्री एंड द लाइटर वन विल हैव अ रेशियो टू सो इफ द काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ हैवियर बॉय इज सेवन हंड्रेड जूल दैन द काइनेटिक एनर्जी ऑफ द लाइटर बॉय इज सिंपली लेट्स जस्ट सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन So let's suppose we are labeling them with m1 and m2. So m1 and m2 is given to be three by two, and where we can simply say m1 is the heavier one, and m2 is a lighter student, as compared to their respective masses. Now we know from the concepts of kinetic energy that kinetic energy for any particle, let's suppose one, would be P one square divided by two m one, and for kinetic energy of the another particle, it would be P two square divided by two m two, where P one and P two are respective momentum of the particles, and m one and m two are the masses, where K e one and K e two are their respective kinetic energies. Now, as per the question, now as per the question. Momentum one is equal to momentum two, simply. So we can substitute them, and though we have kinetic energy one divided by kinetic energy two as m two by m one. I hope this expression is very clear to you. Now the kinetic energy associated with the heavier one would be ke one. So what we have because ke one is the kinetic energy of heavy one. And Ke two is the kinetic energy of lighter one. And as per the question, the kinetic energy of the heavy boy is seven hundred. So we have Ke one as seven hundred joule divided by the Ke two. Now m two by m one. We have a ratio m one by m two to be three by two. So m two by m one would be two by three. And if I solve it further ahead, kinetic energy of the lighter object is going to be seven hundred into three divided by two, and that is joules. So seven hundred into three will going to give me twenty one hundred joules divided by two, and thus we have. Kinetic energy of the lighter object to be one zero five zero joules, and I hope the question and the solution is very clear to you. So that's how you are going to solve this kind of question, and the correct option is option number one, and we can highlight this. And I hope this kind of question is very clear to you. So let's move to the next question. <laughs>